Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I have one of the darkest neutral density filters I've ever used. This thing is 15 stops. Let's take this out and see what this can do. So a few days ago, the company Polar Pro sent us a few of their neutral density filters. One of them is a 15 stop filter, the other is a 10 stop filter that actually has a polarizer attached to it. Now, 99% of photographers are going to want one of these because they probably shoot landscapes and they want really long exposures, maybe 30 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes. And that's going to create silky smooth water and super blurry skies, which does not look like anything you can traditionally do just with your camera alone. So the way these filters work are just like any other filter. You just screw them onto the front of your lens and it's going to block a lot of light from entering and hitting your sensor. Now there is a range of different neutral densities. The most common ones are probably two stops or four stops, and those are gonna be used for general photography or even videography. But when you start getting into the 10 or 15 stop filters, you can't even see through these. So these are used for very special applications. Now I'm here in Charleston, South Carolina, and it's pretty flat outside. We don't have these epic landscapes to shoot. So I'm gonna do something completely different, head downtown and see if I can put this to use. All right, so here I am on Broad Street. We're right in front of the St. Michael's Church, which is one of the most iconic churches in all of Charleston. And what I wanna do is I wanna take a photograph where I try to minimize the traffic behind me and also the pedestrians and the tourists that are walking around. Now, you could take a couple photos, throw them into Photoshop and start manually cloning out all the distracting elements. But what if you wanted to get a photograph that was as close to perfect as possible and do it all in one single frame completely in camera? Well, that's where a neutral density filter is really gonna come in handy. Now, before I add the Polar Pro neutral density filter to the front of this lens, let's see what type of exposure I can get without using anything whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my camera all the way down to f22. Now, this is not the optimal f-stop that you would use on your lens. I would prefer to be shooting around f8 or f16, but since the only way to get a long shutter would be to lower my aperture all the way down, let's go to f22, and then I'm gonna go to ISO low on this camera, which is about ISO 32. And let's put this camera on a tripod and I'm gonna be able to see exactly the longest shutter that I can get in this bright situation. I bet it's not gonna be that slow. So I found my composition, I put the camera really low to the ground and I'm shooting at an area that's called the four corners of law. So basically I have this really cool post office to the right. A quick little side note, I'm gonna be shooting at 24 millimeters and because I'm having to angle the camera up, I think in post I'm gonna to have to stretch everything because I don't have a tilt shift lens, but I'm shooting wide enough to kind of take that into account. Now I have this D850 set to take the absolute longest exposure possible. We're right here at about four or five o'clock and I'm at F22, I'm at ISO 32, and I'm only able to get a shutter speed of an eighth of a second. So as you can see, I'm definitely gonna to need to introduce some neutral density, but let's go ahead and take a couple shots to see how little we are actually gonna blur to these cars. Here comes a car and a bus, let me go ahead and take a picture. And as you can see, this is just like taking a snapshot with a really fast shutter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this 100K neutral density filter to the front of my lens. Everything's already composed, I have the focus correct. And what's nice because I've taken these test shots, I'm gonna be able to see how much color cast is introduced from this filter. But by adding this filter, I'm going to be able to drastically lower my shutter speed and hopefully I can take an image that might be 30 seconds, maybe even a minute, and completely remove all of the cars and traffic from this frame. So now that I've added the neutral density to the front of the lens, I definitely can't see through live view, and I cannot see through the viewfinder either. So it's really important to make sure that you have your composition set and you have your focus set so that you do all of that before adding the neutral density. Now, because this is 15 stops, in theory, I should mathematically be able to figure out what my new exposure is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from F22 and I'm gonna open up all the way to F8. And the reason I wanna use F8 is because that is the sweet spot of this lens where everything's gonna be as sharp as possible without introducing a diffraction. So if I go from 22, I can go down one stop to 16, two stops to 11, three stops to F8. So I've already taken off three stops. Now with my shutter speed, I'm just going to introduce 12 more stops and then take a test shot. So I've run into a problem here. I have slowed my shutter about seven to eight stops and I'm already now at 30 seconds of an exposure, which means the next click on my camera is actually gonna take me into bulb mode. And on this camera, that's going to require that I have 
a trigger release actually plugged into my camera. And when I'm walking around casually taking pictures, I don't usually have that with me. But luckily the D850 goes one more stop over and it introduces two little hash marks. And what that's going to allow me to do is click the shutter, the camera's gonna open up, and it will stay open indefinitely until I click the shutter one more time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my phone, I'm gonna go to the timer, and I think maybe eight minutes is a good place to start. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start on my cell phone, and I'm gonna take the first picture. So what I'm gonna do now is just wait for eight minutes, and hopefully at the end of this, I should have an exposure that's very similar to the first shot that we took, only now our shutter speed is going to be much, much longer. So here's my hope for this shot. As you saw in the previous photograph, if you take an image with too fast of a shutter speed, everything's gonna be frozen, or it's gonna have a slight motion blur, but it's not gonna be enough to actually remove the objects from the scene. But since I have an eight minute exposure, my hope is that no single object stays in place long enough to actually make an imprint on the final photograph and I'll wind up with a shot that actually looks like this entire intersection is completely empty. Now, while we have just a few more minutes before this exposure is over with, you're probably asking, well, why in the world would you wanna use a 15 stop filter if it's making you take a picture at eight minutes? And the reality is, is that it's still pretty late in the afternoon. We're here at about five o'clock and it's not really that bright outside. I think this filter would give me a lot faster of a shutter if we were you know, in bright noon daylight or we were in an environment like the desert or somewhere where the sun was just really beating down on your scene. But because this is kind of an overcast situation, we are getting a lot longer exposure than I probably would like. All right, our timer's about to go off. There we go. And let's go ahead and stop the camera. And the fun part, we always get to see what the final image looks like. Now this is pretty interesting. So the clouds have this really wispy look. I was worried about how they were gonna register. They actually look pretty cool. But if I zoom in, I actually still see a lot of car lights. I see a couple random vehicles, especially over here in the front of the church. So out of curiosity, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change my aperture now from F8. Let's go to F11 and let's double the exposure time. So I'm going to change my timer on my phone from about eight minutes to 16 minutes, and hopefully adding even more time will fix just these slight little problems that I do see in this frame. So I've started my timer, let's hit the shutter, and now let's wait 16 minutes and see if this crazy long exposure looks any better. I have to say, this is probably the longest exposure I've ever taken. All right, there's the end, let's stop this. So while this picture isn't flawless, I think this is about as good as you can get in camera, and I'm really impressed what a 14 minute exposure could actually do to such a crazy busy scene. All right, so here we are in the post-production studio, and I just wanna show you how I did the final edit on this photograph after I captured it out on the field. So in this first Photoshop document, I did wanna compare the color cast between using a filter and using no filter. So as you can see in this photograph, this is the 1 8th of a second photograph, and you can see you have a little bit of blur of the cars, but it's nothing significant to actually make them disappear. And then the second photograph is a 35 second exposure. And if I toggle between the two, you can see that there's a slight difference in light on the buildings, and I think that's just the nature of doing a long exposure, plus you had you know clouds and shade and hard light hitting different areas. So there's definitely a difference in the light in the scene. But as for the overall color, I mean, we've tested a lot of filters that have some pretty drastic color cast. This one actually looks pretty spot on. I don't really see any major problems with the color cast. So I would rate this as one of the better filters that I've seen in terms of color cast. So now let me open up the actual final image. And here's the final photograph that I wound up taking at 16 minutes. And as you can see, the sky looks really interesting. I got extremely lucky with the way that clouds moved in this particular frame. And although there are some car movements down here in the background, I'm really impressed with how vacant this scene looks by using a 16 minute exposure. So the first thing that I needed to do to get my final photograph was I needed to warp everything and stretch this out so that I could get all of my lines vertical. Now I could have had a tilt shift lens out on the field and have gotten this perfect in camera, but Unfortunately, I don't have a tilt shift lens. And in some cases, tilt shift lenses, especially wide angle ones, they may not allow you to attach filters to them. So here is the next image that I wanna show you. And this is basically just using the edit free transform tool. 
and I basically put a bunch of guides in Photoshop and I skewed the entire image so that all of my vertical lines were as vertical as possible. So that really got rid of that weird uh, keystoning effect that I had because my lens was tilted up. And then as I looked at this image, if you've ever been in this location, there's not a lot of color here. The post office and the courthouse are both kind of off white. And then of course the church is white as well. So I played around with this a little bit with some color adjustments, but I thought, what would this look like if I turned it into black and white? So here's the final image that I wound up using. And basically what I did was I'm a huge fan of the Alien Skin plugin. So I went to Exposure and I just played around with different film effects that use different grains and uh, different tonalities within the black and white. And I wound up with this final photograph. So I think this is really cool, very interesting. It's just a different spin on a photograph that's probably taken quite a bit here in Charleston. So my overall impressions with using something like a 15 stop filter is actually kind of fun. Like I don't get out in the field and do really long uh, exposures very often. I've definitely never taken a picture as long as 16 minutes and I've never shot with a filter as dense as a 15 uh, stop filter. So this is really, really interesting. If you'd like to get your own 15 stop filter and start doing your own exposures with really, really long shutter speeds, you can actually go to Polar Pro's website in the link below and they have a pretty interesting buyback program. Basically, if you send them one of the filters that you already own in the mail, they'll give you up to $40 off on your purchase of one of the Quartz Lines filters. Definitely can't beat that. And from my experience using this for the last week, this is really a top-notch filter. I'm really excited to have this in my bag and stay tuned because we're gonna release another video where I try to take this out and do some really extreme time lapses. So we'll see how that turns out as well. For more videos like this, head over to fstoppers.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And if you want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com store.